In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear friends, we are not physically gathered in this church, but at this time we are gathered in our various homes and in isolation to spend some time in prayer, praying for the repose of the soul of Martin Welsh. We're here to honour his memory, to recall him with affection, but also to pray to Almighty God to grant him a kindly welcome into the kingdom of heaven. We need to the very start of this time express to Fred and to Karen, his children, and to his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, the whole family and friends, our sympathies and prayers at what is a difficult time compounded by the burden of isolation. At the start of this Mass, as we do at the start of every Mass, we acknowledge before God that we are sinners, that we too need his forgiveness and mercy in the same way that we turn to God for his forgiveness and mercy for Martin. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins so as to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners. Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Martin, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to the scripture readings where we listen to the word of God and are nourished by it. A reading from the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord. Going as we do by faith and not by sight, we are full of confidence. I say and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. While at supper with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another wondering which he meant. The disciple Jesus loved reclining next to him. Was signalled by Simon Peter to ask him 
who it is he means. So leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said, Who is it, Lord? It is the one, replied Jesus, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. At that instant, after Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus then said, What you are going to do, do quickly. None of the others at the table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund. Some of them thought Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus had taken the piece of bread, he went out. Night had fallen. When he had gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, and as I've told the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, Why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, said Jesus. I tell you solemnly, before the cock crows, you have disowned me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, it was on the 18th of April in the year 1941 that Fred and Peggy Welsh welcomed into the world their newborn son, Martin. It was literally a few hundred yards from here along on the Gallagate in the East End of the cat of the city. He was to be part of a sibling group consisting of Francie and Patsy, both of whom have passed away and we remember in this time of prayer too. Martin went to school along at St Anne's and then to St Mungo's, a schooling very familiar to many people in this part of the city. He served his time as a welder, but later was to go on and do a bit of taxiing and also do throughout his life a bit of bookkeeping. He was in fact the third generation of bookmakers, or a bookie is we just we call him. But his interest throughout his life was to be football. And we'll come back to that later. But what we do need to start off with was his love of his life, Jeanette Bradshaw, whom he met in 1958. They met either in the Pali or the Barrowland or the Locarno. We're not quite sure, but it was 1958 and they married on the 3rd of June in 1961 in St. Thomas's in Ridri. 
In fact, it is back to Ridri that we will be taking Martin's mortal remains this afternoon to inter him in Ridri Cemetery. But in 1961, they married, and two years later, they were blessed with their first child, Karen, to whom we offer our profound condolences. Um, I echo again that sentiment expressed at the start of Mass. And indeed, later on, there was Fred as well in 1965, and to Fred too, we offer our condolences. He was to go on to be further blessed by the grandchildren and great-grandchildren, Craig, Sean, Laurel, Macy, Robin, Caden, Sophia, and Ada Grace. To all of them, as you say, a fond farewell to your beloved dad and granddad and great-granddad. Our prayers are with you today. I mentioned the great love of his life was football. Football and indeed the bookmaking and the dogs. He was never a man for staying in, I'm told. He was always out at the shaw field or at the, at the Greyhound somewhere. He enjoyed his life and enjoyed good friends. But he loved football himself, being a proficient and competent footballer. And the early days playing with Rutherford and Waverley, then St Rocks, um, and West of Scotland, Johnston Borough, and indeed even Celtic for a while. But that love of juniors and amateur football was to be continued. In fact, he loved going along to the Barrafield training ground would be when it was along there at Barrafield. Some of us will remember that with affection when you were able to go and see the first team train with very little fuss. But indeed, it was when Craig played for Queen's Park and Stirling Albion that Craig would notice just from the side his, his granda stalking him almost because such was his passion for the game he would just turn up. In fact, in latter life there, just for his 75th birthday, he was up in the committee at St Rocks, he celebrated his 75th birthday. Fred was telling me that one characteristic of Martin's or his dad's was that he loved having a dig at folk. He loved having a wee poke at fun. In fact, he was actually cringeworthy at times. In fact, someone in paying tribute to him said, I really liked Martin, but I didn't know if he liked me. He was always having a go at me. Fred delivered the assurance, I was his son and I didn't know if he liked me. I hope that sums up the character. But in a very slow and difficult way, vascular dementia slowly robbed us of Martin, eventually ending up in Ashton Grove Care Home, and we're grateful to the staff there for their care for him. He went there after the death just at the late last year of Jeanette. He was blessed with good friends all his life. There was David Rossi, James Mortimer, Matt Sawyers, Pat McEwen, Bob McBriar, and John Welsh. Even his friends began to struggle and cope with Martin as the dementia got hold of him and eventually isolated him. Isolation of dementia is maybe something that we can be akin to as we are all being isolated in this current time with the COVID virus. But our struggles don't end. We're here in the chapel for one reason, one reason alone. We believe that death is not the end. In death, life is changed, not ended. We believe that Martin's story doesn't end here doesn't end in death. We listened to the gospel passage just of the Last Supper. The readings are for Holy Week we're in. And it's not a glamorous part of the Last Supper. We discover that two of the twelve um, 
are going to betray Jesus. In fact, it's a wee bit ironic that if we're talking about football, Jesus was asked to pick a squad of 12 and two of them would betray him, Judas and Peter. We know the sad end of Judas, but we know that Peter goes on to not only come back to Jesus, but be restored and to become the first pope, the captain of the team. In football terms, we can equate with that, can't we? That some of the, the best captains that football teams have have not been the greatest players, but their qualities. I think of Roy Aiken, wasn't the best player in the world, but feed the bear. He was fantastic, he was strong, he brought the team together. And that's the qualities that St. Peter had because it was his, his desire. He was always wanting to do what was right. And we take hope on a funeral day that our lives don't need to be perfect, but if we desire to do the right thing. So we pray to God today that he recognises the good that Martin did, his desire to do good, and also forgives whatever sins he committed during the weakness. He welcomed St. Peter back into the a band of the apostles and there is no sins that separate us from the love of Christ so we pray for any sins that Martin committed in human weakness today God grants him forgiveness and everlasting peace and our prayer today is simple and our prayers profound eternal rest grant unto him O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon him may he rest in peace may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace Let's turn now and offer our prayers of intercession, praying for Martin and the repose of his soul. Prayers of the faithful. For Martin, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For Martin, who shared in the body of Christ, to sustain him on his journey through life, that he may find eternal rest in the presence of Christ. Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of Martin, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all of us gathered here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Martin, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abbaot, Pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember your servant Martin, 
whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son, a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Of mercy in us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I encourage you now to offer whoever's in the room with you a sign of peace, an exchange of peace. If you're isolated or are isolating, contemplate the peace and love of God which dispels the darkness of sin, fear and death. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Martin may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This is the conclusion of our Requiem Mass, and now we gather with the immediate family at the Ridley Cemetery to inter Martin in the hope of the resurrection. Let us go there in the peace of Christ. gone. You can shed a tear for he is gone or you can smile because he is lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he'll come back or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him or you can be full of the love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what he would want, smile, open your eyes, love and go on. He is gone. Rest in peace, Granda. We love you, we miss you and thank you for everything. the end of a storm.